because I have been speaking. Because I have been associated with this IoT since very long time, and we have a different chunk of um, uh, people joining uh, from a, a pan a pan India. So uh, maybe somebody we can start off uh, just to give you an introduction. Maybe your name, maybe your specialization, or maybe the institution institute with which you are affiliated oh, with, yeah. and anything whatever you feel like. I'll just take five minutes, and then of course we start with our main session. So anybody can start, or maybe in case. Uh, you want me to take out the names anybody anybody can start off all those who are uh, listening to me on this platform so let's let's have some round of introduction with each other yes raj Lakshmi, madam i can see your message but you can unmute yourself and then you can speak on the mic please hello good afternoon hello, myself I'm raj. Good, afternoon. good afternoon ma'am good afternoon Myself, I'm Raja Lakshmi. I'm doing research uh -huh. in paleontology field. My major uh -huh. is geology. I'm from Vivo Chidambaram College. Uh, it in Tutukudi district, ma'am. I'm a fresher of this research. Tutukudi district, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Tamil, Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu. Tutukudi, okay. ma'am. All right, ma'am. All right. Great. You're welcome to the session, ma'am. Any uh, next okay. one, please? Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Hello. Yes, I'm yes, Dr. Yes, I we can hear you, I'm Dr. Hmm. Or Tilsanaki, Assistant Professor, Sri Sharda College for Women, Department hmm. of History, Sri Sharda College for Women, Salem 16, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. Oh, so you people are extreme south and I'm, we, are, uh, we are in UP. I'm in UP right now. So wonderful to have you, ma'am. All right. Thank Welcome you. to the session, ma'am. Welcome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Ma'am, ma myself practicing. Ma'am, uh -huh. myself is practicing. I'm a PhD scholar. From All right, Department Prachi, of you are English. A... Department of English. Oh, yes, wonderful. Yes, ma'am. From so, Bharti University. Where is this? Ma'am, in Meerut. Swami Vivekananda Subharti University. All right. All right, Prachi. You're welcome to the session. Okay, good. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right, Peter. All right, next one, please. Uh, hello, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, Hanji. Myself, Dr. Harpreet Kaur. I am an assistant professor in Hindi from Chandigarh. And okay. I'm serving. Uh, yeah, I'm serving in PGDC 42 Chandigarh. All right. So, Chandigarh, ma'am, I was invited resource person in Buddy University long, long back. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> All right, ma'am. You're welcome to the session. Okay, wonderful to have you. All right, so Thank we've got you. people from Chandigarh, from Tamil Nadu, from Meerut. Anybody else would like to give the introduction? Hello. Yes. Hello. Uh, yes, good yes, afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, uh, I'm Geeta Hira. I'm from Chandigarh. I'm working as a guest faculty in Punjab University, Chandigarh. All right. All right, Gita, ma'am, you're welcome to this section. Our, uh, our uh, one of the profound uh, uh, faculty member from BHU happens to be the VC of Tan Punjab University, most probably. All right. So yes, anyone, yes, anyone, yes, anyone else would like to... Yes, yes. Anyone else would Yes, ma'am. Good, good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, yes. um, good afternoon. Myself, yes, ma'am. Myself, Shivli Datto. I am from West Bengal. Uh, recently, mm -hmm. I am trying to get enrolled in uh, PhD. Uh, mm -hmm. So I I have completed my master's in social work, and mm -hmm. I already qualified NATE in 2023 and trying to get enrolled in uh, PhD. So I am giving interviews. So I, if I select it, then I will do the PhD. All okay. right. Our thank best you. wishes goes to you. <laughs> Our best thank wishes you, thank goes you. to you. All thank right. You, Welcome to the session. All right. So anyone else? Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I am Dr. Stalin from Tamil Nadu. All right, sir. Uh, working as a principal in uh, Arts and Science College. All right, sir. All right, sir. So nice to have you, sir. <laughs> yes, thank so you. nice thank to you. have you. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. Anyone else? Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, yes. Myself, Murali Bisain. All right, Murali, ma'am. I am PhD scholar. Department of Economics okay. from Maharashtra, okay. Nagpur. Nagpur. Oh, yeah, Maharashtra. So nice to have you. 
All right. So nice to have everyone. So once again, a big welcome to each one of you to this uh, wonderful five day FDP, which has been organized by IoT Academy. And today happens to be the first day. And of course, I'm sure um, since the this is all related with research and we have an August audience today uh, comprising of the um, uh, the principals, the teachers, the assistant professors, the research scholars. Uh, so nice to have you all. All right. So let me start with my presentation now. Just a minute, let me um, share my screen with you all. All right, is my screen visible? Yes, ma'am, the slides are yes, visible. Ma wonderful, wonderful, yes, wonderful, yes, wonderful. All right. So it's like um, uh, the the first session for this uh, five day FDP. It's all related with the uh, introduction to research methodology. Uh, this is so nice that we have a lot of doctorates also joining in from different parts of the country and the research scholars and of course the principal sir. Uh, my name is Dr. Rakhi Gupta. I work as an assistant professor in the Faculty of Commerce in BHU RNSC. And I just hope that I'm able. I, I just hope that I'm able to live up to the. I'm, I'm able to live up to the expectation of the people who have joined today. So uh, let me start with the very, very primary word which talks about the research. So when we talk about research, it is nothing but it's just the investigation of new facts in any branch of knowledge. As rightly said, somebody is from humanity, somebody is from geology, somebody is from management, somebody is from economics. So at any point of time, whenever we do research, it can be from any branch of uh, field and of course branch of knowledge. And it's uh, rightly said by Redman and Mori that research is a systematic effort to gain new knowledge. Everyone has got knowledge. Everyone knows what is happening, but where there is an where people People feel that I need to go an extra mile to know more or to unla unlayer things. That is what is known as research. And speci uh, specifically, if you want to be in the academic fraternity, in order to get the doctorate, the doctorate is nothing but it's just the research that we do. It says that research is defining and redefining problems, formulating hypotheses, objectives, collecting, organizing, and evaluating data, making deductions and reaching conclusions, testing the conclusion to determine whether they fit their formulating hypothesis or objectives or no. Now, if we talk about from the scholar's point of view, of course, research is on a specific topic. There can be different kind of research that I'll be discussing today. We'll be talking about the methodology. We'll be talking about the entire process. There are different components um, that goes into a research. So basically, we are trying to define a problem. We are trying to formulate a hypothesis. Now, when we talk about hypothesis, it is nothing, but it's just a kind of a testable statement that we have, where we are trying to check the potential relationship between two or more variables or maybe a potential difference between two or more groups. So in any kind of research, when we do, um, uh, there can be different kind of hypotheses. I will not talk about the hypothesis right in the beginning. Maybe at the end of the session, if I have got time at my disposal, I can give you a brief uh, spotlight on hypothesis. So hypothesis, in case when there are people who may be just joining the PhD, or of course, people who are already doctorate, they have better knowledge about what is the meaning of hypothesis. And whenever we're talking about research, so definitely we are trying to test something. And when we are trying to test something, that is what is known as the hypothesis. Or in, or in other words, we can call it as an intellectual guess, or maybe which help us to translate the research problems into clear cut is explanation or the product uh, or the predictions that we would like to have as a uh, as a uh, outcome of our study so when we talk about research we we it involves number of process uh, right from the collection right from the uh, evaluation of data maybe we have we uh, we talk about the deductions also maybe we are trying to formulate a theory maybe we are trying to found, form, uh, found, uh, find a solution to the problem or maybe we are trying to reach certain conclusions or maybe uh, we are trying to find out the longitudinal studies where we talk about about anything which has been um, uh, which is already existing and we are just observing or maybe we are trying to trace something over the period of time or maybe uh, we are trying to trace something which is uh, uh, trace something related with the population where, where we have got specific characteristics over the time so research can be num they can be number of kind they can be number of uh, types of research that they, they uh, we can talk about but ultimately we are defining a problem and we are trying to found a find a solution or we are trying to formulate a hypothesis and of course, there, there, there goes the entire process. Now, the question arises as to why we do research. Now, 
since uh, the we know the fdp is on art of research so definitely the entire research happen, happens to be an art and whatever you do research nobody can say that is right or wrong because we are observing something or maybe we are trying to find a, a problem a solution to a problem or we are trying to find a cause um, a cause and effect relationship or maybe we are trying to find as i told you maybe we can have some kind of longitudinal studies where we are observing or tracing something over the period of time so we basically do research uh, to uh, get certain benefits benefits of uh, benefits or we are trying to face certain challenges in solving the unsolved problems or maybe we are trying to get some kind of joy basically if, if we are the researchers the researchers will always get joy in doing something new they are always inquisitive to get new knowledge added to their um, uh, uh, knowledge box or do anything uh, we can always have research um, uh, which uh, we want to do as a service to the society or maybe we are doing uh, we are doing some kind of research which can be quite beneficial uh, to the higher officials in the administration and the government or maybe in the company where you are working so research is something we, we we can do any kind of research in any area with any aspect uh, for example I happen to be a resource person for a conference in uh, Jaipuria Institute of Management in Ghaziabad. So naturally, whenever we are uh, invited as a guest, you know, we we uh, we listen to number of paper uh, authors and uh, researchers. They talk about different research. You know, out of the box, you know, I was just sitting and then they told me, uh, "Ma'am, uh, we are going to present the paper. Of course, please start the presentation." And it was something unique. You know, the the student had presented something like like we are from academic fraternity. We all talk about humanities like i'm from humanity i'm from commerce so definitely our area of interest will relate to the uh, com uh, commerce area only now she started um, her work on something which is known as the mythological gurus so uh, we see so many mythological gurus on television every now and then now that the research was on them so it's not necessary that we have to talk about business all the time it's not necessary that we have to talk about uh, profits all the time we can do research in any area so it's it's so unique to find somebody doing a research on these mythological gurus that we see uh, them so frequently on the television so you know you can get any idea out of the box and then you can think of okay i need to do a research on this and then you know you just go on and then uh, do a research respectfully so any kind of research is because of your inquisitiveness to know about it then uh, of course we at times we are trying to validate our intuition whether this is right whether this is wrong let me do some kind of research because research involves a lot of planning also and whenever we do anything with the help of planning definitely we get better results then one of the another reason why do we research is to improve the methods maybe if any company has implemented something and if they want to check uh, suppose if a company has come out with a new product or maybe an added feature to their product and they want to know whether, whether this the added product is uh, beneficial for the customers whether they are liking it whether they are not liking it so they can always do some kind of research and then they can always get answers to their question and my dear friends whenever we talk about research in an organization uh, setup so any kind of research is always done with the purpose of getting uh, an output of course and this output is utilized for the purpose of decision making so for the purpose of decision making these organizations they go for different kind of research so that they can take accurate and judicious decisions uh, so that they can implement their strategies properly and of course they attain the predetermined objectives then at times uh, why do we do do research for example it is a demand of the job Job. we have got a lot of research organizations working there are employees who are in a part of the organization so as a part of these organization their job is to do research maybe anything which is related with consensus anything which is related on a macro level so all those things there are part for part of research and of course uh, as an academician myself and of course everyone who's on this platform for the publication and the patent purpose now whenever we talk about the research we have to choose a subject which can be based on an idea anything which comes out uh, because of your experience uh, maybe out of experience if you've seen okay uh, you, if you were working in a company and uh, maybe if you found that uh, uh, that product was not uh, selling uh, so well as you had anticipated then you can do some kind of research and find out why is it that that product is not getting sold in the market what are the loopholes what are the bottlenecks and so on and so forth or anything which is based on originality or anything which is based on their reading we can always choose a subject on that but as an as an academician uh, we of course we choose a sub, some, any subject which is related with our own area 
Now, when we talk about the characteristics of research, it, it is all a systematic process. Every step is interrelated with each other. For example, I am from HRM. Uh, from my background is from HRM, the marketing and general management. So if I talk about selection, selection will not happen until unless we have got recruitment. In that similar fashion, once the people are recruited, they are selected, they are trained and they then they so on and so forth. So here, systematic basically means that every step is interrelated with each other. Logical, of course, that there are principles of logic. Why we are talking about each step? Maybe we are talking about the objectives of the study. Maybe you're talking about the framework. Maybe we are talking about the variables. Maybe we are talking about the hypothesis. Maybe we are talking about the collection of data. Maybe we are talking about the analysis of data, so on and so forth. And empirical, it basically means that conclusion should be based on evidences and observation. Now we'll be discussing uh, in future course of time that there can be different kind of research right from the qualitative and quantitative research so when we talk about the qualitative research it is basically related with the ideas or maybe the observation or maybe the behavior pattern or maybe anything which is related with intuition so our conclusions would be based on those observations. And when we talk about the ev evidences, it can be the causal relationship or maybe anything which is because there's a cause and an effect relationship um, uh, where, where, where we've got different kind of variables and one variable can uh, be affected by the another variable. For example, if I talk about, uh, we can have different kind of variables as well. Maybe the independent variable or the uh, depend, uh, uh, dependent variable and the independent variable. For example, if I I want to know about uh, about the working of a car. So um, the performance of a car will depend on number of independent variables, right? From the uh, the uh, maybe the speed, maybe the uh, oil quality, or maybe the horsepower, so on and so forth. So we have to our conclusions would be based on those independent variables and how they are affecting the dependent variable. Then any research which we have got, it has to be objective. That is, it is able to answer all the research questions. When, 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 whenever we start with the research, we have a problem. We go for the literature review. Literature review is nothing but it's just we are trying to find out the work which has been performed by previous uh, researchers. And we are trying to find out a gap between them. And then we feel, okay, this is the gap where I can work upon. This is my contribution in this particular area. So now we have to find out that uh, it has to be objective. Uh, this is reproducible. It can be. It can have quality control. That means the it can be accurately measured and transmittable. That any any result that we obtain, it can be passed on future uh, passed on to the higher authorities. So all well designed and conducted research has the potential application. Now, when we talk about research, since it's the first day, so definitely, definitely we need to choose a subject. We know we should know what kind of research we intend to do, whether we intend to do any type of quali quantitative research or any type of um, qualitative research. So when we talk about the quantitative research, it is again, it is based on the data that we collect, the primary data that we have, and then we uh, tabulate that data with the help of different softwares, and then we come out with certain numerical values, and then we talk, and then we uh, infer something from them. That means Means we take out some some conclusions from them and when we have the qualitative data uh, so now the qualitative research it is something related with the opinions or maybe with the behavior patterns or maybe the experiences of the people and uh, definitely it's all related with the uh, time you know the, this qualitative uh, research requires a lot of time. Then literature review, the second step that is involved in a research is that um, a literature review. Literature review basically is again I re, uh, is something where the work which has already been done, we are trying to find the gaps and the best way to select your topic is to find the gap and then proceed. Then we have got uh, formulation of specific objectives. What objective do you want to achieve? Like for example, if people want to say, uh, I want to find out about the customer's feedback, that would be the objective. Maybe the other another one feels that I want to know about the behavior pattern. That would be the objective. So different people will be having different objectives of their study. Then we need we need to prepare the synopsis. Then we need sure we should know what kind of um, research we are doing. If we are doing any kind of scientific research, what kind of uh, practice uh, we require, or what kind of materials do we need to have to set up that experimental uh, research? Then we can go for the preliminary experiments. This is more of the 
technical aspect uh, research or in in our humanities uh, for example we can go for the pilot testing uh, once we prepare the questionnaire we will uh, we will administer the questionnaire to the different people there would be different questions different segments and then we would be getting the data and analyzing them and of course we have to have the perfect data collection tools uh, because um, the right input will always lead to right output so if our data the collection tools are perfect definitely our result our um, research would go in the right direction then uh, once we have collected the data the, the data has to be properly analyzed uh, of course it has to be error free uh, but this is not possible in a real uh, real life because whenever we administer any kind of uh, uh, questionnaire to people there there are a lot of loopholes there are unanswered question uh, or maybe unfair or people are not ready to answer few questions or will they will leave it or may they may have that kind of redundancy effect that everyone is marking the same uh, option so they can be different kind of errors that we can encounter at the point of research and of course then we've got the hypothesis testing now this hypothesis testing is basically with the help of the uh, figures that we get or maybe we have we do the testing at the different levels of significance and then we find out whether we have to reject uh, the hypothesis null hypothesis or whether we have to accept it they can basically when we talk about hypothesis there are two kind of hypothesis that when we talk about that is the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis now the null hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but where we are trying to check anything for example if i if i want to know that if a, if there is a culprit and he should be punished so we will have the null hypothesis in the negative form okay there is no relationship between the culprit and the crime which he has committed so when we when we take out the data when we apply different kind of test uh, then we get the um, uh, the results and if the p value is less than or more than on the basis of the uh, p value we decide whether we have to reject the null hypothesis or we have to accept the null hypothesis so in case if you reject the null hypothesis for example so once you reject the null hypothesis that means there is a relationship between the uh, culprit and the crime that he has committed so they can be uh, the hypothesis itself is a big uh, topic that we have but of course uh, based, the most important hypothesis that we have in research is all related with the null hypothesis and it is uh, said that sir ronald fisher is regarded as the uh, father of null hypothesis so we use the statistical test uh, uh, which can be related with uh, you know independent sample t test or dependent sample t test where we talk about the different values of p if it happens to be less than um, a 0.5 level of significance uh, then uh, we decide whether we have to accept or whether we have to uh, reject so uh, definitely if it is more that means the null hypothesis is true and the vice versa then uh, once the hypothesis testing has been done then we talk about the results and the discussion and once we have the result with us we can generalize this now when we talk about the research methodology also we'll be talking about something related with sampling now when we have a sample we can always generalize it is not possible to take the entire population in our control and then we go ahead with the uh, research so what we do is we do, we have different kind of uh, sampling also that i'll be talking about and in that sampling method uh, we can generalize the entire um, uh, findings that have been done so that that kind of um, uh, uh, testing we do that okay we can generalize our uh, findings and of course last may we have got the project uh, report which has to be submitted so this is the process of research again uh, it talks about the research uh, questions we have to talk about the objectives and the goal that we attain which we aim to achieve we have to plan and design our research properly that is what it talks about the research methodology and the research designing part so now at times people they get confused what is the difference between uh, research methodology and research design so when we talk about the research design it is simply a plan of doing research and when we talk about research methodology it is basically a strategy which is used to implement that plan so we will be talking about that uh, research methodology also methodology is something where we are meticulously talking about how we are going to implement our research then uh, maybe then once we have got um, events once we have designed our entire research we talk about how we are 
are going to collect the data, whether it is going to be the primary data, whether it's going to be a secondary data. Primary data happens to be the first hand data. Secondary data happens to be the anything, any data which has already been published. And we are utilizing that data for our own personal um, research purpose. And so once we have got the uh, data uh, sets with us, then uh, we can have different softwares running right from SPSS, maybe the R, maybe the MOS, maybe the same. They can be different kind of tests that can be administered in order to get the inferences. And once we have get, once we get the inferences, the results can be interpreted and the results can be either published or either they can be submitted to the higher authorities for further decision making. So uh, when we talk about research methodology, it is nothing but it's just the procedure or techniques that we use to identify or to select or the process, they analyze the information about a topic. Now, anybody coming from biology background, anybody coming from geology background, anybody coming from commerce background, anybody coming from Hindi background, they would be doing research with their own respective areas. So research methodology is something which is applicable to all kinds of research, irrespective of the field that you belong to. Now, there can be different types of research methodology. Uh, when we talk about the different kind of research methodology, uh, it's basically related with the uh, quantitative, qualitative, and the mixed research methodology. So my dear friends, when we talk about the quantitative research methodology, it definitely aims at testing the numerical data. It helps us in, uh, in the casual relationship where we have the cause and effect relationship uh, between the uh, variables and uh, where we can have the results and then we can talk about uh, or we can generalize the results in the case of research methodology in the case of quantitative. Quantitative anything means where we have got data in numerical form. And then uh, definitely um, when we talk about the research methodology, it helps us to track or to meet the objective that we are uh, that we already have at the beginning of it. Then secondly, it talks about the qualitative data. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, qualitative data is basically where we are examining things related with the behavior pattern, maybe the opinion of the people, maybe about the feedback, maybe the experiences of the people. Maybe, for example, I want to know about the uh, uh, impact of people coming out of a cinema hall about a certain movie. So in case if I'm doing a research, on the experiences of the people that would be contribute that would be regarded as a qualitative data where I will be observing people, maybe I will be interviewing them, or maybe we can um, find out more about their opinions about something. Uh, but one thing what is more important in the case of research methodology or the qualitative research methodology is that it is a very, very time consuming process because here at times we have to spend time on each participant of the uh, of the research because every individual will have different opinion and every individual will have different behavior and the different experiences. So this uh, this uh, here um, uh, time uh, consumption <coughs> is very, very high. Then in the case of mixed uh, method research methodology, <coughs> it is the combination of both and both are complementary to each other. <coughs> Then we talk about the research design. It's, it talks about uh, the term research design basically means drawing for research. We are designing our entire structure of research, how we are going to conduct it we this is more of a planning stage of our um, research of, of our research so basically here we we choose the research methodology and the techniques at the starting of the research now the techniques is like whether we would like to go for the quantitative research or whether we would like to go for a qualitative research and here this research design we can have different kind of uh, information about the techniques about the methods maybe about the uh, other essential details of the project related with the research, maybe the objectives, maybe the uh, framework, or maybe if there, if we have formulated any uh, framework related to our study, that would be all part of our research design. And when we talk about the research design, it will answer the different questions related with who, what, where, how, when, uh, the, through the course of in research. So this is the blueprint of the kind of a research that we are going to do. And definitely when we, ha when we have this um, research design, uh, so it, it, it should be a very, very sound research design that we should have. But maybe, uh, maybe the proper steps, they should be identified. There they, they should be proper steps which should be identified. Maybe, for example, we can have 
have um, how we are going to identify the problem or what would be the literature review or maybe the specific hypothesis. Uh, they can be uh, general statements. They can be null hypothesis. They can be alternative hypothesis or maybe the different sources of data that we will be using for our research and so on and so forth. So why do we actually need a research design? Because it is for the smooth sailing. Uh, but of course, it is going to save our time and money and energy. Of course, um, it's it's a more of a planning. Anything which we do with the help of planning, which will all it will always yield fruitful result. So so is that so is the case in the case of research all, already and also, and it helps us to modify the research if, if if we face any kind of difficulty. And of course, it gives us the reality to the research. Then. Uh, when we are talking about research methodology, we have got research design a part of it. And the research design, I've already discussed what is the meaning of a research design. Then we talk about the research method, whether we are going to implement the quantitative or the qualitative or the mixed method. Quantitative is again related with the numerical data. Qualitative is all related with their opinions, behavior, experiences, so on and so forth. And mixed method where both are complementary to each other. Then we have to discuss, we have to be very, very uh, uh, sound enough to understand uh, what kind of methodology we are going to select or, or the question arises how do we choose the research methodology whether we should go for the quantitative whether we should go for the qualitative or the mixed pack so definitely it all depends upon our research objectives that we have formulated our aims or the questions or once we have already identified the gaps we can always um, take a decision on the basis of the gaps that we have identified then we talk about the maybe the, the statistical requirement do we need that kind of statistical requirement or am I just uh, uh, delving into uh, the opinion part or maybe the experiences part? So if it is just happens to be the opinion and the experience part, then of course the qualitative is the best suited or and the vice versa. So uh, definitely uh, uh, when we talk about the uh, sample size, so in case if I'm going to talk about large sample size, so my qualitative data will not work because the qualitative data is one to one interaction because everybody will have their different ideas, motives and um, opinions or maybe the experiences. So we have to understand what kind of um, research methodology we are going to choose and there can be different factors on the basis of which we can choose. Maybe the uh, maybe the objectives, aims, questions, literature review, maybe the sample size, so on and so forth. Then uh, research instruments and research instruments are the ways by which we are going to get data. So definitely it is all related with the interviews or maybe the surveys or uh, uh, maybe the questionnaires, so on and so forth. Sampling basically means we are drawing, drawing a simple sample from the entire population, which has the capacity of getting selected. Um, every sample has the same capacity of being getting selected. So uh, we have to, uh, once we generalization, as I told about, uh, as I talked about, it is all based on the basis of sampling only so we should be very very selective with which population are we talking about what uh whether we are what kind of sampling we are going to talk about uh, for example they can be uh probability sampling they can be non-probability uh sampling so when we have different kind of sampling so different ki different kind of sampling will serve different purposes that we have in uh that we have then of course, data collection, then we will be analyzing the data. We'll be talking about the limitations. For example, if I talk about anything, any research which is related on women related to a particular industry or maybe the university. So there is, then the uh, limitation is that maybe the ge geographical area happens to be a big constraint in this uh, industry. Or maybe if I if I if I am talking about anything which is related with students or uh, maybe so if, if anybody can be a student, anybody from school can be a student, anybody from uh, BCom can be a student anybody from post graduation can be a student so those can be the limitation that it is not possible for a researcher to cover all sort of um, uh, students so maybe this uh, maybe the study is based on uh, for the students of post graduation maybe the study is based on uh, for the for the students of under graduation so you should be very very clear very very clear what kind of population you have so that can be one of the limitation then we have got validity and reliability now these are the two words which it says that um, we should should get the same data and uh, the instrument that we use for measuring it should be it should have the capacity to measure that for example if we've got a thermometer so thermometer is used for measuring the temperature so we can validate it and reliable is basically 
every time when we are going to uh, put the thermometer it is going to take check the temperature so we have to be very very careful that um, in our um, uh, study uh, the uh, the data that we have got or the result or the uh, research that we are doing it should have the capacity of getting validated and reliable and of course we have to consider the ethical consideration related with the uh, plagiarism and other ethics so uh, research design again we talk about the data techniques or uh, maybe the information that we want to collect now important features of this research design because the introduction to the research methodology methodology is a broader term and research design is a part of it so it's basically a it's a kind of a plan that we have got and uh, this strategy which gets implemented in, in getting the in, uh, collection of data and analyzing the data and of course the most the studies are under these two constraints they are the limitations that we have got that is the time and money now, uh, there are certain very, very important concepts which are related with the uh, research design. Uh, for example, there's a word which is known as variable. Now, variable is something which, which can take, uh, take form in different uh, ways. For example, it can be height, weight, quantitative data, or they can be independent data. They can be dependent wa variable data, variable uh, data, um, sorry, uh, in the, uh, dependent variable and independent variable. Uh, so, uh, dependent variable is something which we are trying to check for example if i want to see the performance of a car so that would be known as the dependent variable and independent variable uh, would be the factors that would be related with it for example the speed maybe the quality or maybe the horsepower so that would be regarded as the iv so in our research terms when we talk about iv they are known as the experimental uh, variables and dv dependent variables they are regarded as the outcome variables however they can be other kind of variables also uh, which can change or which can manipulate uh, those these are the characteristics of the variable or uh, they can be some kind of extraneous variables or maybe the environmental variables or the demographic variables they can be different kind of variables that can be uh, utilized in our studies so one once we talk about the research design we cannot bypass the variable part then we have got the hypothesis hypothesis as i told you they are they are the um, testable statements that we have or uh, where the researcher is trying to get the information about it for, for example they can be different kind of hypothesis that we can use in our research for example it is all it, it could be related with uh, uh, you know directional hypothesis or maybe the non-directional hypothesis for example uh, for example if i want to check uh, uh, whether uh, what is the uh, level of i Q, uh, uh, level of the people who eat good food uh, so for example if um, any any child who is above four years or five years whether they have good iq level if they eat healthy food so they are the directional hypothesis or maybe we can have um, uh, non-directional hypothesis where no theory is involved they can be casual hypothesis where there's a cause and effect relationship as i told you the most important um, hypothesis that we have it's all related with the null hypothesis uh, or which is basically known as the statistical hypothesis um they can be something related with the uh, uh, complex uh, hypothesis for example we we are talk talking about the uh, testing or the interpretation part where we are talking about the relationship between the independent variable and the independent variable for example if i want to know about a uh, smoking drug abuse or maybe the alcoholism or tobacco will they have any any relationship with the occurrence of uh, chicken pox or maybe malaria or mums or may, maybe any other disease so in case if we want to try to find out any relationship between them we can always establish the null hypothesis or the uh, complex hypothesis so the hypothesis happens to be one of the most important element in our research design and they are basically the tested um, statements which are tested with the help of tests uh, where we use uh, statistical test to see whether we have to accept the null hypothesis or reject the hypothesis, null hypothesis. Then uh, right from the collection of data we are designing. Now, when we talk about a good research design, uh, there are certain features that we talk about. For example, they, that they should be, uh, uh, they, uh, the theory should be grounded. Now, when we talk about the grounded theory, now grounded theory basically means that, um, uh, for example, if we have got different kind of research that I'll just talk about. Now, grounded basically means, now, okay, we are trying to find out some theory on the basis of the research that we have done. So, when we 
talk about the characteristic, it should be, uh, it should, it, it should take into consideration the environment, the feasibility part. It should be efficient. It should be neutral. It should be reliable. It should be validated, uh, validated uh, one or maybe the generalization. So here, when we talk about the uh, maybe the efficiency part or maybe the neutrality part, we are talking about the making assumptions. When we are talking about research, we can always make certain assumptions, and maybe uh, we uh, we have to understand that we use the right type type of tools to get the right results and uh, definitely a good research design should be such that it can generalize or that means the conclusions can be generalized enough only then it would be regarded as an efficient run then it should be economical unbiased flexible these are all the characteristics that we should have uh, related with the research design so research design happens to be an important part of the entire research methodology so uh, there are certain go certain uh, go as characteristics also of uh, good scientific research for example the purpose should be very very clearly defined as i told you wrong input will always give us the wrong output similarly if we choose wrong objectives or in case if we do not know about the variables, then of course the result, the research would go haywire. Then the research design should be properly planned, ethical in standards, limitations, analysis of data. For as I as I have been telling about validating and reliability, so validating is very very essential that we should know what kind of tools we are going to use. We have to use correct tools to get the correct uh, correct interpretations, and of course the finding and the justification. So uh, when we talk about uh, research methodology, as I told about as I told discussed that it's all related with research research designing part also. We have to be very very careful about our objectives because it, it will be on the basis of our objective that the hypothesis will be decided. So if your objectives are not clear, your hypothesis will not be correct. And once your hypothesis will not be correct, you will not be able to get the results as you intend to get. Now, there can be different kind of research design or maybe the different kind of research that we talk about that is um, pure and applied research. Now, when we talk about the pure research, it is something which is the uh, study of uh, search of knowledge. We are only trying to find out what it is or how it is. Basically, just finding out the, the study of uh, knowledge. And applied research, when we talk about the applied research, it is all related with um, where we are making uh, solutions uh, or we are finding solution to specific answers. Maybe we are trying to find answers to a particular question which can be scientific or which can be technical. Uh, so anything which is technical, it would be related with three P's. It would be related with product, processes, production. Maybe, for example, uh, maybe if, 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 if there's a research scholar and research scholars would like to know uh, what is the involvement or how a student is involved in the classroom. So that would be an example of the applied research or we are trying to find a solution to a problem if the if the sales of a company they are not increasing then what is the reason behind it they are trying to delve they are trying to research and once we are able to get that problem in hand they can always take corrective action okay the company was not packing the products properly or maybe the company was not labeling the proper products properly so that was the reason the sales were down so this is how just an example that we are trying to find a solution to the uh, problem so pure research just all related with the uh, we are talking about contribution to the new fact they are putting the theory to the uh, to the rest and maybe are trying to clarify things just a simple uh, knowledge base and applied is basically just the keyword of the applied uh, uh, researches that we are trying to find a solution to the problem then we have got the exploratory uh, research. This is the most important kind of research that we uh, basically do. And most of the research are exploratory or the descriptive in nature. Uh, here, uh, basically in exploratory, what is already known about a topic, uh, topic and what additional we can add to it. That is what is explore, exploratory research. We are exploring something which is, uh, which is not yet known to um, others. Maybe, for example, uh, if we want to know about um, anything which is related with uh, maybe the maternity or the paternity leave programs, for example. So we are trying to explore more about it, something which we already know, but what additional can be added, which could be beneficial. That is uh, that is known as the uh, exploratory research. So definitely we are trying to get new ideas or maybe, maybe the uh, formulation is there, information is there, then there can be clarifying of concepts is there. And of course, we are making an attempt to uh, research um, in a better way. Thank you.
then uh, then we talk about the descriptive research describing something in depth so uh, where, like for example as the word itself is talking about descriptive now descriptive is basically how and why huh? how and why anything it's it, this is basically a theory based research and in this type um, uh, we used uh, data collection methods uh, such as observation case studies and surveys and we are trying to describe the things in the simplest form of the uh, research so the purpose is of course more or more or less uh, theoretical and as of course it's all related with the data collection and the interpretation but this is more of the qualitative research because here we are trying to find out the observation or maybe at times we take out the inter uh, we take interviews also or maybe the case studies case studies are case study something which has already happened to a person or an organization and we study for example when it was in 2011 when i was in uh, i am so the entire concepts that i am uh, you know they are all taught with the help of case study even if they want to teach you what is the meaning of motivation they will uh, do it with the help of a case study or maybe a case slide then we talk about the diagnostic uh, study it is basically uh, trying to find out the reason behind an issue and the solution uh, that we can have to solve it for example we have got the diagnostic center so what they do they basically actually go deep down and they try to find out what is the real issue and then they report it to the doctor similarly we are going deep down and we are trying to find the reason behind a particular issue and we are trying to get a solution uh, to solve it so this is basically again um, concerned with the discovery covering and testing whether certain variables are associated or whether they are not associated or maybe the frequency uh, of their occurrences then at times we have got the evaluation studies this is one of the type of the applied research and here we are trying to uh, assess the effectiveness of the social and economic uh, programs so evaluation anything for example evaluation is basically if we are supposing if a student has given an answer and we are evaluating whether that is right or whether that is not right so we are here we are trying to assess assess whether in any, any topic uh, it, it can be any topic of your choice whether uh, whether it is correct whether it is not correct whether it has an impact whether it does not have an impact so they can be different kind of uh, testing for example at times you know maybe uh, in um, evaluation studies or maybe in descriptive studies maybe for example if we want to know uh, how customers they interact with different uh, features or how customers uh, react to um, different uh, specific features that they have been uh, that, that the company has introduced so we are trying to evaluate those things then we talk about the action research now action research the name itself is telling us that here uh, we are trying to study an action for example during the time of covid if if um, if the um, antidote was implemented whether it was it has the capacity to eradicate uh, covid or no or covid symptoms or no so that was known as uh, that was the action research that was implemented basically here we actually examine action and we definitely choose a course of action uh, based on the result so for example if if a doctor has given a particular medicine or if the doctor sees any kind of symptoms on somebody here the he would be analyzing he would be assessing the thing and then on this on the basis of his assessment he will uh, <coughs> decide what <coughs> medication has to be given to the patient so that would be an action research for example um, for example uh, another example for action research for example if teacher wants to check uh, the grades of the students and if the if the students have passed with flying colors everything is good but if the teacher assesses that the students have not come out with good marks then the teacher will use new methods of teaching in the second semester so that is an action research where you are examining action and then you are taking an action for the actions that you have observed so when the teacher has observed the actions okay the students are failing uh, they are analyzing why they are why they are failing then the teacher will change the pedagogy and they will uh, implement the new pedagogy so you are observing an action and then you are uh, implementing an action so that is an example of the research, action research then we have got some kind of experimental research where we talk about something which is uh, you know any kind of exper exper uh, experiments are uh, being uh, are done and then the observations are being done and then the results are implemented or they are infer um, or the inferences are taken out from those research so in experimental design here we um, we are actually for example uh, for example we are comparing the effects of the tv advertisements versus online advertisements 
experiment so we are doing an experiment giving an advertisement on tv is another experiment and uh, having a, a tv commercial um, uh, normal tv commercial on a tv uh, so that would be a uh, experiment that you are doing so here we are actually trying to uh, compare the effects of both the things so we are experimenting so this is again we are trying to find out whether which kind of advertisement is most beneficial for the company so definitely uh, uh, this experimental type of research is done to predict the different phenomenon and to maintain um, control over the factors for example if we if we have been talking about the online advertisement or in case if we are talking about the uh, tv commercials so definitely we will be predicting which one is a better option how we are whether whether we are getting the desired sales based on our ad, online advertisement or on the tv commercial so on and so forth then we have got the analytical studies analytical studies again a procedure or the techniques uh, applied to the quantitative data empirical data that we talked about we collect the empirical empirical data we uh, uh, implement different kind of tests with the help of different softwares it can be all related with uh, maybe spss maybe the r or maybe the sam or maybe um, efa or maybe um, pls sam anything the, that kind of uh, data is applied to the study and then we get the inferences and of course these um, uh, testing of the hypothesis takes place with the help of the statistical test that we uh, that we, we apply then we have got something which is known as the historical the, um, uh, research anything which has already occurred in the past we are describing the causes the effects and the trends anybody in the um, in our in our session today maybe from a history department they can better understand what is the uh, research um, historical research then they can be different kind of surveys that can be done uh, basically in order to get the feedback for example if if there's a car company uh, company which has come out with a sedan car or maybe a hatchback car they would like to know how the customers they are reacting so they can always have the survey or maybe the another example in case if the ifb has come out with another added feature in their uh, fully automatic washing machine so they uh, so they they want to know whether the um, the added feature is liked by the customers or whether it is not being liked by the customers so there the survey would be administered and of course the case study is something which has already already taken place and we are trying to delve deep down uh, the uh, uh, the different parameters in case if anybody gets a chance to go to the iams or any of the iams then you will find that the case study discussions they range from 2 hours to 3 hours and without even a blink of an eye the fam the faculty iams they are so profound they are so prolific they are so um, uh, well versed that in the case study they go they will go deep down to tell you the concept they will go down to the deepest um, uh, minute figure uh, numerical figure to tell you see this is the figure here and this with, because of this figure something has taken place and the company has chosen this action or that action so case study is another one of the best ways to find out things uh, of course there would be definitely limited variables then we've got the field study that we know that research is conducted in a lab or in the academic settings in case if it is in a lab the, uh, the we would be getting different kind of uh comma we will be getting different kind of uh, results then uh, since we are running short of time i'll just proceed another important aspect in the research methodology is the sampling part now when we talk about sampling is nothing but it's just selection of the small sample um, uh, from the larger group of people and uh, we can always generalize our findings on the basis of the sample that we have collected and uh, of course the judgments can be uh, generalized now we need to have a proper sampling plan because there can be different kind of sampling that i will tell you this for example we have got probability sampling we have got non probability sampling you might have listened to the people talking about the sample and the population population is basically the entire group and sample is a part of the uh, specific group of uh, individuals that we collect from the entire uh, population and <clears throat> when we talk about the um, there is there is another word which is known as a sampling frame uh, that is also that happens to be a part of research methodology uh, and in the sampling frame is actually the list of the individuals uh, that the sample will be drawn from they are the people um, uh, from who are the people from where we are going to draw the uh, sample of course it could be the entire uh, target population uh, from where uh, the people would be uh, selected and then we when we uh, for example 
and when we talk about the sample size you have to make a decision uh, how many people have to be selected from a, a particular uh, you know uh, group for example if, if the database is very very huge for example if i happen to be from hr and if there is a marketing company and i would like to know about uh, something uh, related with uh, any aspect i'm trying to delve and there are thousands of employees in my company so definitely uh, there would be different database there would be people from the production department there would be people from finance department they would be people from HR department, people uh, maybe from other another department. But in case if I make up my mind that I'm going to pick people from the HR department, so that would be the sampling frame. So people or selection of the HR database that would be constituting my entire uh, sampling frame. And sample size is of course uh, we should know how many people uh, we are going to select from the entire um, population. There are different methods, there are different calculators which are used uh, in order to find out the sample uh, size uh, for the uh, purpose of the uh, research and of course the um uh, the population is basically the bigger part area. The sampling frame, I just told you that uh, we are talking about the uh, list of people from where we are going to select the people, whether we are going to talk about, uh, and we, whether we are going to talk about people, uh, whether we are going to select people from the company, maybe the houses, maybe the from cities. So that is the frame, that is the area or the list from where we are going to uh, select the people. Then there are definitely there are two kind of important methods uh, which are known as probability sampling and the non-probability sampling. Now sampling basically there can be different kind of um, sampling methods in the probability and in the uh, non-probability sampling. So when we talk about the probability sampling, they basically mean that any member of the entire population, they, have, they can be selected. For example, if we go for a magic show and if we have got the population, the magician can call anybody from the the audience so calling two three people from the audience is the sample that he is selecting so here anybody whether the old man whether the young person whether the children whether the ladies everybody has got the equal chance of getting selected so that is known as the probability sampling and basically probability sampling is used in the quantitative research and in case uh, if we want um, when we're talking about the quantitative research, of course, then we have got, uh, then we talk about the validity and the reliability of a data. So now when we talk about probability sampling, there can be basically four kind of probability sampling, simple, uh, simple random sampling, systematic uh, sampling, stratified and cluster sampling. Now, uh, when we talk about the simple random, san uh, uh, simple random sa uh, sampling, uh, there's, there are uh, non-probability also, which I'll discuss. When we talk about the uh, simple probability sampling, Simple probabilities are sampling basically means anybody, any member of the population can be selected. That is a simple uh, random. And when we talk about uh, maybe, uh, maybe for example, if I have got, um, if I want to know about the effect of the media, maybe I have got a uh, thousand people. I can call, uh, call upon anybody on the stage and ask about the feedback. That is a simple random sampling. Then, uh, then we talk about the systematic um, sampling systematic sampling is basically uh it is easier to conduct because here uh, every member of the population is listed with a number but instead of randomly generating numbers individual are chosen at a regular interval for example if, if i have got 100 people and if i if i start from if i pick up one sample maybe at number six and in case if i pick up the second sample at number 16 so there's a gap of 10 people then again i pick up the another sample maybe 26 so there's a systematic pattern that I am following uh, to select my sample. I'm not randomly selecting anybody. If I've got 100 people, I can select anybody. So that would be a random, simple, simple sample. But in case if I pick up everybody, any sample after 10 numbers, so 16, 6, 16, 26, 36, 46, 56, that would be known as the systematic sampling. So definitely uh, there is no hidden pattern, but it is just upon the decisions, uh, decision upon the, uh, of the researcher. Then we have got the, uh, maybe maybe we've got the uh, stratified um, sampling. Here what we do is we divide our entire um, uh, population into subpopulation that may differ in some way or the other. And then from the subpopulation, we may take out one people or other people and then we uh, do our research. Then we have got the cluster sampling. Now cluster 
sampling basically means uh, we are dividing the entire population into subgroups and each subgroup they have got similar characteristics so basically we are uh, we are segmenting the entire population into small subgroups where we they where they have the similar features um, uh, related with the entire uh, population here here instead of sampling individuals from the each subgroup we can select the entire subgroup in one go for example if got 100 people i can divide it into four groups of subgroups and each subgroup they have got the similar character six so i don't have to select all the three other character six i will be selecting only one subgroup which will be having the uh, same uh, uh, same characteristics so at times this is also known as the multi-stage uh, sampling so this is all related with the prob prob uh, probability sampling so these are the terms which i just discussed simple random uh, systematic uh, and uh, the uh, you know cluster sampling let me come to uh, come let me come uh, let me come to non-probability sampling method now non-sampling non um, uh, uh, probability sampling method basically talks about that here um uh individuals are selected based on the non-random criteria there they are there is no criteria but every individual has a chance of being selected uh, in the case of uh, non-probability sampling method so there can be uh, different kind of non-sampling methods that, that for example there can be a convenience sampling judgment uh, sampling quota sampling snowball uh, sampling method now uh, what happens in the case of um, uh, in the case of uh, selection of our uh, uh, sample this uh, sample i'm so sorry uh, we have come to the wrong slide non probability sampling method so in this kind of sampling uh, this is much more easier than the other one uh, because it has got the but here what is the important feature about the non probability sampling is there is a higher risk of sampling biasness and in the uh, these are the techniques which are basically used in the exploratory and the qualitative research so in case if you are doing any kind of quantitative research then you have to go for the <clears throat> probability sampling and in case if you are doing any kind of qualitative research you should go for the non probability sampling research and um, here in the qualitative research uh, the aim is not to test a hypothesis we, we, we basically test a hypothesis in the quantitative area so here uh, when we talk about the non-probability uh, sampling methods there can be four kind of methods for example uh, convenience sampling judgment sampling and uh, your quota sampling and snowball let me give you an eye bird's eye view about all of them when we talk about the convenience sampling is basically you know it is the, on the upon the convenience of the researcher to um, uh, to uh, assess the individuals uh, from where i can get the data initial data can be gathered from the people and there is no way to tell if the sample is the representative of the entire population or no uh, also that it can to produce generalized effect any any anybody can be selected and we can do any kind of uh, kind of research for example if you are doing kind of if you are doing any survey on a topic <coughs> and i want to gather some data so we have got students of the same class so i can pick up anybody uh, as per my convenience and then can ask the uh, person to uh, give the response so that is the um, convenience sampling method that we have got uh, then uh, we talk, then we have got the uh, judgmental uh, judgmental sampling which relies on the belief that the participant will fit the characteristics now for example if there's a magician on the um, on the stage and if there's a population so in case if he is showing any magic which is related with uh, with uh, children so definitely he will be calling upon the people who are belonging to the age group of 5 to 12 so this is a judgmental sampling he has used his judgment to decide what kind of people do i want for my um, for my work so that means anything which which will fit into his characteristics we are going to select the sample accordingly then we have got the quota sampling quota sampling is basically again a non random selection of the um, people here what we have uh, here here what we do is uh, we have a predetermined number of units which is known as a quota for example um, for example if i want to know anything which is related with um, 
maybe um, uh, maybe anyone who uh, maybe anybody who's um, i want to know uh, how many people are uh, into the delivery service maybe for example how many uh, people prefer vegetarian diet or maybe the non vegetarian diet so people who are vegetarian they will be grouped as one group that means one quota maybe people who are non vegetarian they would be grouped as um, uh, uh, they would be grouped as another quota or maybe the people who are simply uh, the meat eager uh, meat uh, eaters they may be grouped as another quota so quota is basically emphasizing on, uh, about the specific characteristics specific characteristics for example if anybody is eating uh, non vegetarian they would be regarded as a non vegetarian quota people who are eating um, uh, veg food they would be characterized as a vegetarian group so th they can be a quota for example if we have got a sample of 100000 people and i want to do some kind of sampling on the basis of the quota here the uh, here what we we will do is we will have the quota of 200 people of each diet maybe uh, 200 people who eat fish maybe 200 people who are non vegetarian maybe 200 people who are vegan or maybe who uh, who do not even have uh, onion and garlic so this is how the quotas are decided and the lastly is the snowball sampling which basically says it is more of the referencing part for example if you go on a ice you know if you have a ball if you keep on rolling on another ice the your ball will become bigger and bigger in that similar fashion we keep on getting the references from from one person to the another and then we can do our research for example if we, if we are doing any kind of research on the homeless people so if we go to and we cannot have the uh, proper plan who are the people who are homeless for example if we uh, or maybe the orphans too or maybe the orphanage uh, children so in case if we go to one orphanage um, orphan child and we ask them then they can refer us to the another one okay ma'am or sir she is also an orphan you can discuss something related with him then we can go on to the second one then we can go on to the uh, third one so that is known as the uh, snow snowball sampling so uh, this is uh, they, these are the two parts of the sampling where we talk about the uh, probability and the non probability sampling and there are certain factors which have to be considered in the sampling design for example about the objectives the accuracy the time frame the people the scope these factors have to be considered while we make a decision regarding the uh, sampling design then uh, we, uh, another important part of the entire research methodology did relates with the data collection now data collection is very very important for the empirical studies as, as i told you maybe the quantitative data and when we are talking about the quantitative data we should always try to use uh, the probability sampling methods that we have just discussed it can be the simple random sampling systematic or maybe the cluster or maybe the stratified sampling method so data collection of course the primary and the secondary data we all know about it and they can be different ways by which the data can be are uh, collected so the uh, data collection i'm sure that uh, it can be with the help of interviews it can be the surveys it can be the questionnaires it can be the simple observation it can be the qualitative data related with the experiences behavior pattern so on and so forth so data collection is an important part and without um, uh, without uh, data collection we cannot have time, we cannot have any kind of research now uh, one thing that i would like to put it across uh, maybe in another quick 2 uh, minutes time because we, i'm already exceeding the time uh, when we talk about the data analysis method there can be two kind of data analysis methods that can be utilized so initially when we had talked about the research design um, research design is a part of the research methodology you should be very very clear that what kind of data that you are going to use or what kind of research you are going to use whether the quantitative or qualitative so in case if it is um, if it happens to be a quantitative quantitative uh, method so if we are using methods of frequency then we can have the count and frequency and the percentages in case of um, if we want to measure anything related with central tendency then we will be using mean median mode anything which is related with dispersion then we will be using range variance standard deviation then we can have the inferential analysis inferential analysis is nothing my dear friends but it's just about the predictions about the larger product uh, larger um, Uh, population we we uh, we have the analysis of the sample and on the basis of the analysis of a sample we can have larger uh, larger uh, generalization uh, about the larger population for example uh, in the case of inferential analysis uh, data analysis method we can have something related with correlational cross tabulation or maybe the frequency tables or maybe the analysis um, of the variance maybe in the case of correlational we are trying to find out the relationship between uh, between 
between two or more variable or maybe in the case of cross tabulation we are trying to analyze the relationship between multiple variables cross or no? well, not not just two variables but more than two variables maybe at uh, here also uh, when we talk about the data analysis we can have something related with regression regression is basically used to find out the uh, impact of a independent variable on the dependent variable dependent variable is nothing but it's just the outcome that we are finding out then we can have something related with the uh, frequency table or maybe the uh, maybe the analysis of the variance we are trying to check the different degree to which uh, one or more variables they differ <clears throat> then lastly then we are talking about the qualitative data analysis method we can have something related with content analysis narrative analysis discourse analysis grounded theory uh, and thematic analysis content analysis is something which we are trying to infer infer basically means we are trying to draw conclusion uh, from the uh, text or the images uh, we've got one software which is known as nvivo so uh, when we use that software uh, where you can uh, there, that nvivo is basically for the qualitative kind of research only then we have got something related with narrative analysis analysis of the data from the interview field observation survey as i told you um qualitative data is always related with uh, finding out with the uh your opinions your behavior patterns your experiences so on and so forth then we can have the discourse analysis and uh for example any and uh, we are and uh, having a discussion with people with social context uh so that is on also an analysis for example if uh, we have got so many tv shows or maybe we've got the delphi method where we have got large number of audience sitting and then we have got an anchor and everyone is talking on the same issue so that is also kind of a research that we do then we have got the grounded theory where we are actually trying to create an hypothesis and here with the help of hypothesis the data is collected and once the data is collected it has to be analyzed any data which is collected any data which is analyzed it is for the purpose of the decision making and lastly, we talk about the thematic analysis. Here we are trying to identify the patterns, different patterns in data, or maybe we are trying to identify the themes, and then we are trying to uh, come out with the uh, conclusion. So basically, data analysis method can be two kind of quantitative and the qualitative data analysis. And lastly, my dear friends, um, uh, as a part of the research methodology, uh, one of the most important part is that whatever research you have done, uh, whichever kind of research design you have opted, or any kind of research method you have opted ultimately you are required to give a research report this report can be handed over to the government or to the your management people or this simply <clears throat> this report uh, uh, can be in the form of the research paper so we definitely we are aware when we are uh, we have the research report uh, uh, we talk about all those things which, which we have just discussed uh, right from the statement of the problem literature review hypothesis or maybe the research design experimental research design what were the limitations or what were the objectives or what were the conclusion what were the findings and uh, what kind of suggestions um, you feel that uh, uh, can be given uh, for uh, better work in future uh, the people you would like to acknowledge the kind of references that you've done, any kind of appendixes that you might like to attach with in terms of any table or charts or maybe any data. Uh, this is again more off with the technical aspect or the scientific research. So um, this is the last part of the uh, entire um, introduction to the research methodology that we need to have a proper research report. And lastly, before I uh, put an end to my uh, conversation, if we knew what we, we we were doing it, it wouldn't be called a research, would it? No, it wouldn't. So research is something which you don't know. And we are all inquisitive researchers uh, in our different field. So with this, I put an end to my uh, presentation today. And with this, I believe that everyone, whosoever uh, belonging to different field, we are always having that quench. Uh, for more research our thirst for uh, more research it should never get quenched and so that we become more and more and more and more or better or better better researchers in time to come thank you so much ladies and gentlemen uh, uh, i think i was a little late uh, almost 15 minutes uh, late uh, in in finishing my uh, presentation today so